Ahlan Musahlan, and welcome to Edupedia World Videos. Intermediate Arabic with your instructor, Laura El Albani. In this lesson, we'll be learning the singular demonstrative pronouns. We'll be focusing on Valika and Tilka. This is part two. Learning Objectives. By the conclusion of this video, the student will be able to, one, decide when to use dalika or tilka, and two, understand when to use hadha versus hadhi or dalika versus tilka. Let's begin with a quick review. Remember that demonstratives are words such as this and that, used to indicate which entities are being referred to and to distinguish those entities from others. The Arabic word for demonstratives is ism el ishara. There are four singular demonstratives, hadha, hadhi, thalika, and tilka. Thalika. Thalika means that in Arabic. It's the masculine form and it's used with masculine nouns. Now let's look at some sentences using thalika. Look at the following examples and examine the differences between them. Thalika mataron. Thalika mataron means that is an airport. In the second example, we have thalika el mataru. Thalika el mataru means that airport. In the third example, we have thalika hua el mataru. Thalika hua el mataru means that is the airport. Let's examine these examples grammatically. In the first example, Thalika Mataron, we have a full sentence. It begins with Thalika, the Ism el Ashara, meaning that, and a singular, indefinite, masculine noun, ending with new nation. Thalika Mataron, it's a full sentence meaning that is an airport. In the second example, we have Thalika el Mataru. Thalika is the Ism el Ashara, meaning that, followed by a definite masculine singular noun, el Mataru. It only contains one vowel marker at the end because it is definite. It's no longer a sentence, but merely a phrase. Thalika el Mataru means that airport. In the third example, we've added hua, the word for he or it in Arabic, in between Thalika, the ism el Ashara, and el Mataru, the singular definite masculine noun. Here, it becomes a sentence again. Thalika hua el Mataru means that is the airport. Let's look at another example using Thalika. This time, we're going to use the noun khitab. Khitab means speech. How would you translate the following? Thalika khitabun. Thalika khitabun means that is a speech. It's a full sentence. What about the second example? Thalika el khitabu. Thalika el khitabu means that speech. It's a phrase. And finally, how would you translate Thalika hua el khitabu? Thalika hua el khitabu means that is the speech. Now let's look at tilka. Tilka means that, just like Thalika. But tilka is the feminine form and it's used with feminine nouns. Let's look at how we use tilka. Look at the following examples and examine the differences between them. In the first example, we say tilka sayaraton. Tilka sayaraton means that is a car. In the second example, we have tilka as sayaratu. Tilka as sayaratu means that car. And in the third example, we have tilka 
Hiya Asayaratu, which means that is the car. Let's examine these examples grammatically. Look at the first example. Tilka Sayaratun. Tilka is our ism alashara. It means that. Sayara is a singular feminine indefinite noun ending in tamarbuta. Because it ends in tamarbuta, we have a ta sound at the end when we add new nation. So it's pronounced sayaraton, sayaraton. Tilka sayaraton means that is a car. In the second example, tilka again is our ismelishara. This time we've added an aliflam to sayara to make it definite. So we have a singular definite feminine noun ending in tamarbuta. It only takes one vowel marker and is pronounced tilka asayaratu. We no longer have a full sentence, merely a phrase. In the third example, we add hia, which is the word for she or it in Arabic, in between tilka, the ismelishara, and asayaratu, the singular feminine definite noun. Tilka hiya asayaratu means that is the car. Let's look at another example using tilka. We'll use the word ziaraton. Ziara means visit. This time it's your turn. I'm going to read the sentence or phrase and I want you to tell me what it means. If I say to you, Tilka ziaraton. What am I saying? Tilka ziaraton means that is a visit. What about if I say tilka a ziaratu? Tilka a ziaratu means that visit. And finally, if I say tilka hia a ziaratu. What am I saying? Tilka hia aziaratu means that is the visit. If you are confused as to whether you need to use dalika or tilka, consider the gender. If the person being talked about is a male or the thing being talked about is masculine in gender, we use dalika. If the person being talked about is a female or the thing being talked about is feminine in gender, we use tilka. Remember in part one that if we want to decide if a word is masculine or feminine, we look at three different things. First, does it end in tamarbuta? Secondly, does the word itself have a feminine meaning? Or thirdly, did the ancient Arabs say that it's feminine? So by now, you should understand the difference between dalika and tilka. Both words, dalika and tilka, mean that, but dalika is used for males, and tilka is used for females. Thalika is used for things which are masculine, and tilka is used for things which are feminine. Now let's recap which ism alishara you need to use. If something is close to you, and it's a male, or it's of the masculine gender, you use hadha. If something is close to you, but it's of the feminine gender, or it's female, you use hadhi. If something is far away from you, and it's a male, you use dalika. But if it's far away from you, and it's female or of the feminine gender, you use tilka. This brings us to the end of our video. Thanks for watching.